Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Fridays with Fawn. I'm Fawn Lopez, publisher of Modern Healthcare and vice president at Crane Communication. Joining me today is Dr. Tamara Duperval Brownlee, chief health officer at Accenture. Prior to joining Accenture very recently, Dr. Uh, Dupaval Brownlee was Senior Vice President, Chief Community Impact Officer at Ascension. Throughout her career, Tamara has served as a champion for providing high quality health care and advancing health equity that has impacted thousands of lives. Welcome and thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Fawn. I'm so thrilled to be here and have this conversation with you. Thank you. So let's get started. You are a physician leader with over 20 year experience in practicing medicine and leadership. What sparked your interest in medicine initially? Uh, it's, a, it's a great question. Uh, I think I, I came out always wanting to do something to save the world. If, if My mom would tell the story. And uh, as I thought about what that could mean, I think it was just being a physician. Uh, when I had a chance to interview her a little bit more about where did this love for medicine come from, she did share that her passion at one point was to uh, to be a physician, but she ended up teaching, which was a great foundation, I think, for, for me growing up and, and past her love of science and mathematics. Uh, but it was really rooted in just wanting to do good. Good for you. Thank you. What inspired you to take a role in administration and how has your clinical background contributed to your career success? Um, thank you. It has been, um, I think, a, an evolving journey to uh, have a career as a practicing clinician and then also as a leader. Um, I, I feel like my journey is a little unusual because almost as soon as I uh, started my journey as an attending physician and finishing my fellowship, I was catapulted, if you will, into a leadership role at, at my first institution. And I was somewhat of a reluctant leader. You know, I, I liked to do. I liked to be able to put my hands to the plow and, and affect outcomes and seek patients. But I guess... Um, fueled by questions. I'd always ask about how can we do this better or why is this this way? Uh, it lent to why I'm here today and, um, you know, continuing to lead. I think the, the biggest uh, transition point was really being in a place of not practicing any longer and being a full-time uh, executive leader. And my uh, resolution, I guess, towards that end is really thinking about impact. My North Star has always been to be in a place to enable people to live healthy and well. I did that as a physician, taking care of people one by one, um, as a medical director, taking care of populations, and most recently at Ascension, affecting what happens to millions of people across the country. And uh, what's kept me true is my North Star, and then realizing that I was using my talents and my skills to uh, make greater impact. I know that identifying and eliminating um, disparities in healthcare outcomes has been an area of passion and focus for you throughout your yes. career. How does this new role allow you to continue that work? Uh, it's, a, it's a unique opportunity, I'll say. Accenture is a very large multinational professional services firm that really is in the business of delivering human talent and potential and technology. So what's the role of a chief health officer uh, who's passionate about health equity? And honestly, it's it's really focused on the people. The greatest asset of Accenture is really its people um, that delivers value to clients. Um, and a great part of that is in healthcare delivery. And the opportunity that the organization had in bringing on a role like mine, which is new, is really how to maximize the potential of the 600,000 associates across the globe and ensuring that health and wellness and, and mental well-being strategies are in place responsive to current needs and also enabling people to uh, live whole, wholly so that they can be good leaders and, um, and great performers throughout the way. From an equity perspective, um, I must say the interesting part is that is the multinational focus, um, which uh, I'd never had the opportunity to delve into. But 
thinking about healthcare in the U.S., of course, has great opportunities and challenges, but also thinking about it in India or uh, in Australia or some places in Europe is a whole nother level of opportunity. That's great. So during your tenure at Ascension, where you recently helped, held the role of Senior Vice President and Chief Community Impact Officer, you led the organization's transformation in the Washington, D.C. area and resulted in significantly improved op operating performance in just nine months. So to what do you attribute this success? Uh, first, I would say I was really grateful for that opportunity. It was a um, a different type of assignment, if you will, for me in terms of uh, exercising my gifts in an operational role. And the other is perhaps a, a dovetail into advice, you know, for, for leaders and, and future leaders is sometimes you get these really unique opportunities that um, seem large and very challenging and you wonder how you're going to get it done. And the real key to success is having great support from executive leadership, being able to build a, a great team that can embrace uh, a, a compelling vision and burning platform for change and transformation. The opportunity we had in the market was uh, evolving. You know, we recently transitioned a community hospital that was beloved and um, held a long presence in DC and then trying to figure out how we were going to be an ambulatory uh, footprint while still delivering care to many people who were vulnerable and marginalized within that community was a hard one, but we had lots of supporters in the community. And uh, I think being transparent, being honest, and being steadfast and really wanting to deliver on our promise to the community is what really lent to the success. Good for you. Well, um, it had a lot to do with your skills and determination. And so I was, I'm curious, what was one of the biggest surprises for you? I think the biggest surprise was, was ultimately success, but um, what more so is um, the benefits of putting yourself in uncomfortable situations that seem daunting and challenging is actually the opportunity where change can happen, where development can happen, where growth can happen, ingenuity and creativity. And that I feel like was unleashed uh, for me personally during that opportunity, as well as for my team. Ultimately, um, I can't help but acknowledge the tremendous support, you know, across the organization. Matrix relationships are so important. As a matter of fact, relationships are important, period, and everything else is derivative. And I think if you have those strong relationships so that, you know, where expertise is needed, where, um, uh, uh, you know, resources are needed, and you can get those based on the relationships that you've developed, then the sky is really the limit. Um, as a matter of fact, today I was speaking to a colleague who is, is in the market right now and shared some really great news about um, a new uh, achievement that they were able to go forward. And for me, that's the ultimate measure of success, that not only we did what we did, you know, when I was on the ground, but even beyond, they're still realizing success. And you've had a, a stellar career and been very successful as a leader. Um, and I'm just curious if there were any hurdles that you faced as a woman of color that you've had to overcome to get to where you are today. And what were they and how did you overcome them? Uh, that's a very great question, and I think that's one that's important to answer, and uh, we should continue to have dialogue about. Um, as I've reflected in particular over the past seven years of my career, um, I would say hurdles that I had to overcome were largely internal. Um, and in part, I think it is uh, learning to operate within environments that aren't used to my background, my skill set, you know, my point of view, and how to come in with courage, um, encouraging a, an inclusive mindset, and not being daunted by detractors. Yeah. Ultimately, skills do win, relationships do help. Um, and when you're able to find the early supporters, um, and get those early wins, those amplify, I think, your potential so much more. So for me, it was really allowing myself permission to grow, 
to thrive and, and kind of get over myself. It's given me certainly momentum to come into an organization now, like Accenture, where I don't have a lot of peers, you know, um, in the physician space, for example, but uh, really leaning on what I've learned to be courageous, to be bold, you know, to be brave and, um, and help the organization achieve its goals. Thank you for sharing that. I, 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 I'm sure that your comments um, will be are very helpful to, to the audience because we can all relate to that. Yeah. Um, so speaking of leadership um, and success, women and people of color uh, are still underrepresented in um, leadership roles and in boardrooms. What do you think healthcare organizations need to do in order to increase representation of women and minorities on their leadership teams and in their boardrooms? Um, it's a great question. And uh, I will say that I've spent a lot of time thinking about this uh, over the course of my career. It starts with intentionality. Um, so as organizations are moving forward, especially today in, in 2021, where we know, for example, the demographics of our entire country you know, is leading to one that's more diverse than ever before in many parts of the country. Um, our need to be able to respond in a culturally humble way and um, to have leadership that uh, brings in diversity of thought in addition to diversity of background and culture is imperative. And if an organization isn't intentional about achieving that goal, knowing that if you have diversity in your leadership, in your boards, um, in those who are providing input and influence, then um, you're missing out on opportunities to actually grow, achieve more financial success, uh, achieve greater adherency um, uh, with the population that you're trying to reach and achieve. So with that, um, organizations first need to make sure that it's a strategic priority that's endorsed from the very top, and I mean from the board, um, the existing board in its in the leadership of the organization, and making a firm commitment that in a measured amount of time that the areas for improvement and inviting diverse thought, diverse cultures, diverse backgrounds um, are measurable, and mm -hmm. that there are very specific tactics to be able to get there. I'll speak to what our CEO, Julie Sweet, has done in, um, in recent years, in her short time on the ground in two years, you know, she was very bold in making um, a pronouncement of the intention of having an inclusive leadership team uh, throughout the organization and setting very public goals about percentage of women in leadership, for example, to be 50% by 2025, um, increasing the cultural diversity of the leadership team from the highest levels on down and empowering teams to really work on doing that. So it means how they recruit, looking at their standards and measures of requirements, you know, qualifications to come to, to the organization, being more inclusive and really having performance measure, uh, the performance evaluation, excuse me, of leaders based on how well they do on those targets. It, it may seem controversial, you know, um, and may, may almost scream a bit of quotas, you know, from back in, you know, a few decades ago that we had, but it's really much more than that. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, if there isn't a move to be intentional about increasing numbers and inviting that diversity, then you won't, you won't do it. It's a, it's a wish otherwise, right. and you won't get there. So um, that, that I think is that that's the headline for me. And what I've learned that actually works is have intention set goals, and be very creative and innovative about the tactics um, and strategies that you're using to bring diverse thought into the organization. What a great um, piece of advice. And, and um, again, all of that is important, but also um, making it public, right? Um, being transparent about the goal so that yeah. you're, you're held accountable. Absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm so excited about this time that we're in um, yep. in the U.S. and in healthcare organizations to make this happen. Um, there still is a lot of work to do, so I hope we don't take our foot off the gas uh, towards that end. But I am very excited and very encouraged by the direction that we're going. As am I. So yeah. thank you to the center for its commitment. Indeed. Um, so what would be your advice then for women and people of color who are preparing for their next step into an executive position, what did you do that you feel 
uh, really prepared you for um, for your career and your success in in leadership? Um, some things I think are, um, are are somewhat rote, you know, or obvious. Uh, work hard, you know, and always show up well. Uh, make sure that. Um, you are fully aware that um, when you're in spaces, you're representing not only yourself, but others, you know, who came before you and potentially those who come after you. So having um, technical competence, having uh, high emotional intelligence and a strong ability to execute are really key um, in order to make uh, the next leap and the next move. Some of the things that we don't talk enough about, um, however, is especially women will go ahead and uh, will work very hard, but um, don't take the active steps of promotion. Yeah. Uh, and it's different from from bragging. You know, it really is being able to share and articulate where your strengths are, how you've contributed to the organization to move towards its goals and then finding mentors, you know, who can tell you the way, you know, which is not not ever published, but there is always a way, you know, that people have the opportunity for promotion and, and elevation. And then lastly, sponsorship, which um, I know you've given a lot of voice uh, for people to to talk about the importance of sponsorship. And um, and by saying it for a future leader, it may, it may seem um almost unattainable because in a way you need to be noticed to attract mm -hmm. a sponsor. Um, so by saying it out loud is to say for those who are listening, who have the potential to be sponsors, always keep your eyes open for high potentials, for talent that's around you um, and the ability to develop. Um, for those that are looking to be future leaders, when those sponsors find you, respond, you know, so yeah. it means that they will extend, you know, uh, the stretch assignments, you know, sometimes those big hairy goals that nobody seems to think is going to work, but it's an opportunity for people to see where you are. And maybe it won't work. I'm just going to be transparent about it. Sometimes these assignments are um, a bit daunting and mm -hmm. uh, may not get to the outcome that everybody hopes, but it gives an opportunity for people to see who you are. Um, be confident in that. You're there for a reason. So take space at the table and execute. Um, and, and I think those are the real things. The, the last thing I'll say um, is that everything in balance. And um, I learned this from a very dear mentor of mine, as I know, as a friend of modern healthcare, Dr. Patricia Maryland, who yes. served as an executive leader um, within Ascension. Um, she was so important for me at Ascension. Um, she served as a sponsor. She extended those stretch assignments for me. Um, but she also was, um, I think, gracious enough to remind me that um, do what you can when you can, you know, but all, take care of yourself at the same time. Um, so, you know, by her modeling um, uh, wellness, both her physical and her, her spiritual and mental wellness, uh, was so important, you know, for me to realize that I don't need to sacrifice my well-being, you know, in order to accomplish, you know, the next thing or the next advancement uh, going forward. Well, you just gave me a great segue <laughs> into my next question, <laughs> yes. which is um, about um, taking care of your mental and emotional health. And, and so the past 18, 19 months have been extremely difficult for all of us. So how have you been able to uh, take care of yourself, your mental health, your physical health? And what do you do to relax and refresh? I always had a discipline, I think, of self-care to some degree. I um, personally uh, can't survive without periods of quiet and meditation and, and prayer to start my day and kind of think about what I have ahead and how I need to prepare. Uh, physical movement is also very important to me. I'm an avid runner and, uh, you know, engage in the Peloton universe. So um, it, doing that was also very important as well in order to just have balance, uh, manage negative energy, even positive energy in that respect. Um, but I think something about the past year and a half, especially working on the strategies to help keep people safe during the pandemic was very impacting. And um I realized that it was protective and restorative to allow myself to have space to say, I'm not okay today, especially, and I, I don't want to forget this, even the gross injustices socially that we saw during the past year as well, um, 
to allow the time to reflect, to perhaps decline a meeting or two that wasn't mission critical and, um, and think, you know, um, have therapy, um, to be perfectly frank, and um, get through and process the different emotions that were happening at the time and how I wanted to show up and respond um, in that way. It's, it's so interesting. And while I would never hope we ever have the time that we had last year ever again, um, I do believe in, in giving thanks in all things. And my gratitude for last year is health and safety and strength. And for those moments last year that were painful um, in managing through the COVID pandemic as well as the social injustice pandemic, because it concretized me, for me so much why I'm on this planet and why we all need to be in community um, for justice. Um, and we do that in healthcare, we do that in our, in our lines of business and um, in how to take care of ourselves as we're fighting. Yep. So. Um, that that is my formula. Thank you for such uh, great advice. And yes, giving yourself the permission, Grace, to do to say no, to yeah. give yourself the space and and the time to to reflect. It's so important. And I too am always uh, struggle with yeah. you know balancing that. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you so much for the time that you spent with us. Um, do you have any closing comments or advice for women looking for a career in healthcare, in medicine? Uh, sure. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't um, leave people with just an encouragement that um, you are enough um, and you are deserving of the seat uh, that you have. Um, I would always say to keep in mind and front and center your why, you know, why you feel like you're here. Um, the strengths that you have and amplify those and don't focus on the weaknesses. Surely sharp, sharpen your skills. You know, if there are areas of opportunity, work on those. But you will leverage more by focusing on your strengths and advance and make impact than you will focusing on weaknesses. Also, go to the place where you have value. Yeah. Um, if there's anything that we've learned um, over the past few years is that um, we often tolerate so much, um, you know, because we feel like we have no other option. But when you are in a place where you're valued for your talents and your skills, it's transformative. So if you're not finding that when you are, make some decisions. You know, do you need to um, improve or optimize or is it time to move on? That's great. Yes. Well, I wish I, we, could, we have more time together because you're so you have such calming influence. <laughs> I just, I, I could talk to you for hours. And thank you for sharing uh, your story, your time with us today. Um, it has just been an absolute pleasure and an honor to, to you, speak Fawn. with you today, Tamara. And uh, thank you to everyone for watching. And as, I, as always, I look forward to uh, seeing you on the next uh, episode of Fridays with Vaughn. Thank you. Mm -hmm.